Now, we are also asked to measure a piece of filter paper. You might ask why, because the solid that we made that's cooling off right now is going to be filtered, and so it's going to be collected in here. And we want to know how much solid we collected, and we got to know how much filter paper is here to begin with. So what I'm going to do is open this up. First, I'm going to zero it out. Then I'm going to put my filter paper on it. And notice it doesn't touch anything. And the filter paper is a mass of 1.494. Now what's going to happen is we're going to be uh, collecting our product in the filter paper and drying the whole thing next time. And we are going to be writing the uh, total of the filter paper plus product here. And to find the amount of product, all we have to do is subtract these two, and we should be able to get that. So what I did is I took, um, and I, it cooled off by itself, and then I put it in some cool water. And the temperature has gone down, not quite to room temperature, but it's close. And yeah, it's important to try to you know, do this fairly slowly, and then you get nice, pretty crystals when you ever do a crystallization. So what we're going to do is we're going to cool this off a little bit more. You notice how blue the solution is. That means there's still some of this product in the, um, in the water. So I'm going to put this in an ice bath now. And of course, we make an ice bath by putting some ice around the beaker and let it sit fairly undisturbed. You can put a little water in there too, but don't put water in the beaker. Now let's see if we notice any changes after a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to be filtering our, um, our mixture. You'll notice that it has some dark crystals at the bottom and lighter at the top and it's not quite transparent. I mean it's transparent but it's, it's still got a color imparted to it. Let's see. So I take my filter paper, I fold it once, I fold it twice, okay. Then I open it, so I have a little cup. I'm going to use a little distilled water. Distilled water isn't going to, you know, damage anything here. And we're going to wet it so it sticks to the sides. And I'll describe this extra. Okay, and all right. And what I'm going to do is I am going to mix my product constant because if I don't I'm just going to get liquid at the top. I want to mix this and I want to filter it using the spout. I don't want to stick this into the filter paper because it'll break so let's see you can do this and I'm going to put some white paper under here so you can see what's happening. You can see how nice and clear that is. I put the blue solution in the top, and I'm getting a uh, liquid that's uh, clear coming out the bottom. That's great. Now, I have to make a note. Every time you touch a product or a reaction, you're going to lose a little bit of a product. So. Looks nice, huh? The blue liquid is turning clear. Now you don't want to put too much in here. Now we want to keep an eye on this uh, it's called the filtrate, the stuff that comes out. 
question is, is it still clear the whole time? Now there's a lot of heavy stuff in here, so I'm going to try to get it out. With the other end of the spatula, of the... Uh, It takes a little time, but this is basically how a coffee filter works. <laughs> but we don't use coffee filters, we use Keurigs now, so we don't see this. I'm going to use a little water, and the trick is to use the water and to tilt it. Wait. Oh, yeah. To tilt it at the same time as using the water. We don't want to fill it with water to the top. I'm going to show you the, the liquid that came through close up. Let me show the crystals again. So I've got to get all of that out if I want to collect all the product. Again, the best way is to tilt the beaker and to and to rinse it out at the same time by being a little refrained with the amount of water we're going to use here. Oh no, that's pretty good. Get a close up of that beaker over the white paper. The beaker looks, well, looks like it has a few crystals in it, so I'm going to take this out. And I'm going to use a little ice cold water. Now notice it, the filtrate was clear, but at this point in time, it isn't. So I took some water and I cooled it off in a little dropper bottle. And going to put it in here. I can get the rest of that out. I think I did pretty good. Every time you see a little bit of blue, that means something was left behind. So you might want to ask yourself, why is that blue? Is it the copper sulfate that didn't that is left over? Or is it some of the product that wasn't completely dissolved? in the solution. So we're going to have to answer that question later. Now we've, uh, we've got our uh, filter paper with our product in it. We've rinsed it with some cold, very cold water. Uh, why was it very cold? Okay, why did it have to be cold? You can answer that question. We, I hope you made observations about the filtrate and what color it is. It started off clear, now it's got that little bluish tinge to it. Why? Again, we'll think about that. We're going to take this uh, paper out, being careful not to rip it. <clears throat> and we're going to un we're going to unwrap it. And we have pretty, it's pretty wet at this point in time, which you'll notice there's some darker uh, solid and there's some lighter solid. So we're going to let that um, dry overnight at least, and all the water will be gone. And then we can measure it to see what kind of yields we got from this experiment, okay? So here we are, we um, took our material, we filtered it, put it in the drawer and let it dry. And uh, it dried by itself, this is the next lab period. And uh, we took the uh, filter paper, which had been empty, and we um, actually are get a, a, total val a total mass of six point 715 grams now. now. I'm going to write that down. Yep. So that kind of completes our data for the um, synthesis of this unknown compound. We know how much we made. 
we know what we mix together, and we're going to be working on knowing which one of these is a limiting reagent, if, if either one is. And then we're going to be figuring out the percent yield that we got from this synthesis.